Spurs take on the Denver Nuggets again tonight, this time in San Antonio. And what is the latest in the Josh Primo situation? You are locked on Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Lockdown Spurs right here on the Lockdown NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs right over kids by San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with promo code Locked On. That's pricepicks.com, promo code Locked On. How is everybody doing? Happy Monday. Get ready for the work week. We're going to get you going right here, catching a few things up. But all things Spurs. Silver and black and the good stuff. Spurs got the Nuggets tonight. Rematch. Hopefully the uh, Spurs can be a little bit more competitive. Or maybe the Denver Nuggets just stopped making everything they threw up in that first game. We're going to be previewing that. But first, we're going to catch you up on the latest um, in the situation of the Josh Primo Spurs, uh, you know, former psychologist that, yeah, that, that thing. We're going to catch you up on what has been said. And what the Spurs have to say, what Pop had to say, what RC Buford had to say. Uh, yeah, a lot of people had a lot of things to say since we last touched on this. Who is helping me carry all the weight today? He is my good friend and colleague at Kins 5 San Antonio. He is Casey Vieira. Casey, welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. And my goodness, that, that daylight savings time thing threw me off yesterday. Man, we were dragging. <laughs> Man, was I dragging. Yeah, we were, dra- we were dragging a little bit. A little bit, it, it, not gonna lie. It's, it's like it's like 5 30 in the afternoon and you look outside and go oh it must be midnight already i mean that's that's what it feels uh-huh. like yeah yep. yeah but i definitely appreciate the extra hour of sleep i i do i do like that but man uh Likewise. i don't know if it's just one of these things casey where you get older you feel time more like you just feel it like, like man, uh i probably is, i could see that yeah Flying, yeah but Speaking of time, the last time we touched on the uh, Josh Primo situation was just when the news broke that the Spurs waived him. We had a uh, fast and furious a lockdown Spurs on that episode. And then there was the press conference that Busby had with Dr. Coffin. Spurs spoke out. Popovich spoke out. Buford spoke out. And we haven't done something since. Now, I had a lot of fans ask me, Casey, well, what's up with that? I initially said, well, let's just wait to see what the Spurs would say. And Casey, color me naive. I really thought the Spurs were going to have like a Boston Celtics, Ime Yudoka type conference on this. And they didn't. So, no. yeah, yeah, I was really hoping for that, but they did not. But let's, let's, let's catch up people where we left off here, locked on Spurs. So after the news dropped that Primo was waived, uh, Tony Busby, who's representing uh, uh, Dr. Cawthon, the former Spurs psychologist, on this issue that he allegedly uh, exposed himself to her multiple times, nine times, according to the lawsuit. And he had a lot of things to say, such as calling to task the Spurs culture. Uh, If you read the lawsuit, Casey, I'm pretty sure you did. Uh, They even pointed out how there was a uh, kind of a staff meeting about respecting the workplace and the way the lawsuit painted it was kind of a joke that nobody took it seriously. There's... Mm -hmm. I mean, she had a lot to say, Dr. Cawthon, saying that the Spurs had time to fix this, to address her concerns, and it took her, uh, them 10 months to do something about it. All in all, we had that. What were your thoughts on the Tony Busby Cawthon press conference? Um, it left, you know, I thought it, I thought it answered a good amount of our questions, mm-hmm. but I think the ambiguity, if you will, of how we interpret, um, I guess, and I'm, I'm kind of treading lightly with my wording here, but how we, you know, interpret certain details of the suit that they're not able to get into just for, mm-hmm. you know, legality sake. Um, I thought that was interesting. My, my big takeaway from the past few days from, I guess, Thursday, the presser, and then Friday, mm-hmm. uh, pop and the subsequent statement that the Spurs released, the, the mm-hmm. RC Buford statement, is that it seemed like while well, while they did have the uh, I guess, you know, acknowledge that they're they're limited in what they could say mm-hmm. with certain with certain things, that being, you know, Spurs Sports Entertainment and R C, 
I felt like reading the statement, and I'll, and let me let me bring it up. I I felt like oh, it 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 didn't exactly downplay the entirety of it, and and I'll right. tell you what I mean. It says we disagree with the accuracy of facts, details, and timeline presented today. While we'd like to share more information, we'll let the legal process play out. Now, I, my takeaway from that was like, okay, we disagree with the accuracy of facts. Is it the overriding sentiment of what's going on? We don't know that. Mm -hmm. Is it two little things in particular that aren't adding up? Right. We don't know that. And I felt like that really was kind of their way of saying, you know, of, of protecting themselves. And I know you're, this is more your realm of, of protecting themselves, but also kind of being like, eh, you know, we're not, we're not saying everything that you're saying is wrong right now, mm -hmm. because clearly something happened. You know, if it was right. all alleged, Josh Primo and all likely, knowing, knowing the Spurs organization and how they treat people who are struggling, Josh wow. Primo would still have a job right now. You know right. what I mean? Right. Like Josh, Josh Primo, Josh Primo, the, in all likelihood, something, something happened there. Uh, something happened there, whether it was the, mini, the, the Minneapolis part of it or whether it was the, the doctor's part of it. Something, something happened there that led to Primo's exit. And I mm -hmm. felt like with the Spurs statement, it was very much their way of saying, again, that they were protecting themselves and not necessarily denying mm -hmm. all the things that were set in the suit, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah it, it was definitely a uh, power uh, Busby conference in the sense of the allegations, uh, you know, from the doctor speaking herself, reiterating how she gave the Spurs chances to address this. It didn't happen in a timely manner. There was Busby saying that it wasn't us who leaked it. Don't look at us. It was somebody from within the team that did it. it was I thought that was very interesting. There was mm -hmm. also the... Um, the whole thing of, you know, how Brian White was being uh, evasive, trying to talk with her, how at least allegedly the lawsuit says the Spurs just didn't even tell her to come onto the trip to the Las Vegas Summer League trip. So she, I mean, they were just, it was just so charged with so many allegations that uh, you left that, if those are, I mean, every, I think all Spurs fans were tuning in, just left like, wow, Spurs, this is bad, this is bad. And as of right now, it doesn't look good. But do you think the Spurs kind of quiet but not really quiet stance is hurting them? Because if if this is part of the the plan, you know, or, or what we can predict what's going to happen, then Busby and Cawthon, they took the first swing in this fight, and it was a strong one. And it just feels the Spurs are not necessarily fighting back, at least in the public eye. It's tough to say. Um, right. You know, you you mentioned the when the Ime Udoka thing happened, yeah. Um, and the presser that Celtics ownership and Brad Stevens had. Mm -hmm. You know that that's the thing, as far as I know, has not touched the legal landscape in any capacity, right? Right, right. As far as I know, there 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 is no lawsuit anything right. involved there. Exactly. That's just an employee. Yeah, that's an employee mm -hmm. just being told to get out of here. You know, for infidelity behind the scenes. So I think that spoke to them being more transparent. Uh, it, it's, it's tough because, you know, the early part of a suit is, is you know, again, this isn't my, my forte. Yeah. So yeah. Forgive it's, me. It's, Some of it's, this it's, is, a, is it's a boxing match. It's a boxing match. Yeah. It's right, each other right, out. Right. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's what it is. And I, I don't think the Spurs were going to say anything you know, remotely close to implying one thing or another a little bit more mm -hmm. definitive, definitively outside uh, what they did. I thought mm -hmm. Pop, I thought Pop at the, at the press conference on Friday, uh, I thought he was, did a good job of being as revealing, and I mm -hmm. say that kind of loosely as he could. Uh, I thought... I I I like so if someone had asked him what's the message to the fans. The fans, yeah, I remember that. And I thought that was I thought that was probably the hardest hitting thing, that reasonable thing that he would be able to answer to, mm -hmm. um, in respects to what people could and could not ask him. 
you know, people mm-hmm. are always looking for that for that bite. I mean, that's probably one of the more hard hitting questions that that you can that you can get. And he answered it fine. Mm-hmm. It, it it's just tough because you know we we you know working in the media, we always feel like the Spurs are tight lipped about everything, and largely they are. Largely mm-hmm. they are. They they're tight lipped about everything. So, you know. Can I say right now that any organization would handle things differently? Probably not. Yeah. In the infancy of, of a, a lawsuit and any other potential mm-hmm. legal ramifications ensuing afterwards, they're not going to do anything. You know, yeah. not even 24 hours or, or a little over 24 hours after the suit gets filed in Bear mm-hmm. County, they're not going to do anything. You yeah. know, maybe down the road, I'm sure, well, not maybe, I'm sure down the road they'll have to acknowledge this uh as right. it goes on um but uh, again i mean knowing how the process and the spurs franchise i think we're going to be in for a lot of the we're referring back to our statement kind of thing yes. whenever the next su- whenever the next subsequent statement comes out absolutely until they have to you know until they have to absolutely you know acknowledge it no other way around it mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think yeah. we're, this is what we're in for. We're going to get a lot of, yeah, you know, we stand by the statement. We refer you back to the statement, things like that, and for mm-hmm. the foreseeable future. Because I think this is going to, like you said, I think this is going to be a, this is going to, this is going to take a while. Mm-hmm. It's it going to be, this is going to be a thing. So it you know, is. it's very much it a is. get comfortable type of mm-hmm. yeah. thing, if you will. We're talking with Casey Vieira from Cans 5 San Antonio. Follow him on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. We're talking about the latest in the Josh Primo Spurs uh, Dr. Coffin situation. And then later, we're going to look at tonight's game, Spurs Nuggets. Thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And I want to talk to you about Price Pick. It's a daily fantasy app you got to get. So what is it? Well, you pick two to five players. And if they go on to score more or less than the Price Pick projection, you go in up to 10 times your money on any entry. Not competing against any uh, anybody else. There's no people. It's just you versus the projections available. So Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. This includes NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basket, cricket, soccer, WNBA. Yeah, all that and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and in Canada. You want to download the Price Picks app right now or just go to pricepicks.com, sign up, and play daily fantasy sports. Users, listen up. You can receive up to 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Price Pick gives you 100. You deposit 50, Price Pick gives you 50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. <laughs> We're back with Casey Vieira right here on Locked On Spurs. We're talking about the Josh Primo Spurs situation, and then later the Denver Nuggets play the Spurs once again. We'll look ahead at that game later on tonight. Uh, you know, one thing that was also uh, brought up during this whole uh, Primo situation, Casey, is that Primo's attorney definitely went on that the you know the defense right away. As soon as that Busby mm-hmm. conference is over, boy, did they fire off a statement. Uh, obviously, and you know, no surprise, they denied each and everything. Said that Dr. Coffin right. fabricating everything, you know, uh, the fantasy world kind of language. Uh, yeah, so it, it, you could get the tone already, as Casey said in the first segment. This is going to be a long drawn out fight. The, my my concern, though, Casey, that if it is a long drawn out fight, there's going to be discovery, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, the discovery process may reveal stuff like emails uh, when the Spurs, Brian Wright knew, you know, timestamps. Uh, did she make formal written complaints against uh, Primo? Uh, did, and then in those emails or documents, it could surface that the Spurs acknowledging him by name saying, oh, my God, look at what Primo's doing. Let's just say I'm making this up, everybody. Uh, Brian Wright informs Buford. Hey, I got this uh, this complaint from her that Primo's doing X, Y, and Z, exposing himself. I, I think if this drags on, that could possibly happen, Casey. I mean, we've really opened Pandora's box at this point. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now that this has happened, it's not going to get it's not going to get any prettier 
in any respect from here. It's mm-hmm. going to get ugly. It's going to be a lot of those details that are coming out and uh, or or or, or opposite I, or or opposite. You know, discovery could prove that the Spurs did try to correct Primo right away, and they need you know, and you know, and and it'll shine a better light on them. But the the true. way the vibe the the way the vibe is right now, it's definitely you know on the surface not looking good. You mentioned like your interpretation of the statement. They're not you know, the Spurs. That is their their reaction more like yeah, we're we're not saying everything's completely wrong, you know. But you right. got things bubbling up too. You have uh, a psychologist association uh, come out in support of Dr. Cawthon. That's been the latest. There's now a criminal investigation on Josh Primo. That's popped up since we last spoke. You're right. This is only going to get worse. And what's, what's a shame is this could be kind of a dark cloud and otherwise it was supposed to be a very spring-like season for the Spurs in the sense of rebirth, regrowth rebuild new chapter and now you got this hanging over the season casey sad right yeah it, it's sad um because while we were all expecting the you know the l's to pile up I, there was a strong portion of us that actually felt and to be fair you know it's not on it's not on the current kids who are on the floor and i think that's what we need to remember with all this is you can't remember that you, you have to remember you know, barring something crazy, it, this is not on the current roster. This is something mm-hmm. that's outside of them, and you hope that doesn't change the perception. But listen, uh, it's really hard for it not to change the perception. I mean, next time I I go to a game, my, next time I step foot in the AT and T Center, I I'd be lying to you if I'm looking on if I'm sitting up there and I, and I'm looking at that Spurs bench. I'm not asking myself. I'm like, man, did they like how much did they know? They like, did they really know? I, I'm asking myself these questions, the questions I don't want to, I don't want to think of, think about. You know, you think about the worst possible scenario, but mm-hmm. unfortunately, with something like this, all scenarios are, are possibilities in the immediacy right now until, until we get more details. Um, but we'll see. You know, we'll see. It, it's. I'm not I'm not entirely sure where I'm at with it in terms of I, I think I'm just kinda like everyone else, just kinda sit back and and buckle up and, and get pretty ready for the ride because it's gonna be something here. But if anything, I think the overriding feeling that I had after the Busby presser, I was like, Man, this might be the darkest day in the history of this franchise. Yeah. It, now it, that it, might it, not be, nece- you know, it, it might not be mm-hmm. necessarily fair for me to say that because of the infancy of the process, but I'm like, this is what it's come to. You know, like, yeah. we're, we're, we're talking about this, like the Spurs, mm-hmm. it, it almost feels taboo to say that this was going on inside of there. Yeah. But here we are. Here we yeah. Are. And, and, and you look at the situation overall, just in the NBA, uh, you have the situation with Sarver and the Suns, and yeah, you know, the, the Dallas Mavericks situation that they, they went through recently. There was, um, Kyrie, Kyrie, well, Kyrie, <laughs> that's a whole other episode, you know, but let's, I'll leave yeah. that to locked on Nets. Uh, they, they got themselves. A handful Man, with that one. I, I will say, I will say yeah. that Spurs PR, they owe, they owe, they owe the Nets. Oh, thank you card yes. Because, yes. Man, Thursday, Thursday, Kyrie stole the show, and it was almost like outside of San Antonio, this primo thing was non-existent. Absolutely, non-existent. yeah. Yep. And forget, and then they got the the NBA has the Mile Bridges situation too. So, yep. you know, it's 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 definitely a situation this season where it feels like it's more off the court stuff than on the court stuff to start the new season. Uh, right. And the primo situation doesn't help as well. I, I overall, you know, you mentioned about the darkest days, you know, what I was thinking about what have been some of the quote unquote darker days for the Spurs, you know, and people say, well, there's Kawhi, but I mean, in comparison, that's different. Yeah. That's different. yeah. I mean, that was more about just where he wanted to go play hoop. That's it. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I'm trying to get out of, yeah. There was yeah. nothing like that. I mean, that. It's, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 well, that's basketball. You know, basketball, personnel decisions, players leaving, players and coaches getting fired, things like that. Yeah. 
that's a, a different context you know, of the term darkest. I mean, this is, mm-hmm. you know, uh, honestly, I wish, I wish Kawhi was the darkest day in the history of the franchise <laughs> yeah. right now. Me, me too. Uh, but, but looking at some of the past, you know, bad situations with the Spurs, you know, you got the Alvin Robertson thing. I mean, that was pretty bad. You know, the, right. uh, that was really ugly. Uh, I mean, there there was Rod Strickland. Rod Strickland did something very similar to what Primo did when he was a spur flashing, allegedly, other uh, women. There was, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, these things are far and few between for the franchise. And I think that's what everybody's kind of shocked at is uh-huh. and I'm Spurs, you know, the Por Vida, the family, the the We Care uh, the, the the you go to the YouTube page. They got the voices section. And it's all about you know everything not in the Josh Primo realm. But I want to get your thoughts on this too because I had some fans mention this to me. Like they blamed the Spurs for the situation in the sense of if they really did their due diligence when they could have when they drafted him, they could have red flagged this and passed on him. And I get there what they're trying to say, but at the same time, you can't control an individual. If he's no. doing this, he's going to do that no matter what, or she's going right. to do something like that no matter what. The individual's not going to. And then, and then, if you're trying to get a job in the NBA, you're not going to be, you know, a prospect. You know, the one of the prospects selling NBA teams. Hey, by the way, I thank y'all for scouting me, and I hope I'm on board. Y'all take me. By the way. I have a history of flashing people, just to let you know. Yeah. We're not going to come up, we, f- up front no. on that. So yeah, yeah that's not something that's ca- – yeah. yeah. You know what? I had a great workout. By the way, let me casually just drop this in here. Yeah. Right. So uh, – but but it does it does kind of make you think like um, – you know, again, that's where I think the discovery process will come in. You know, we'll right. reveal that if it gets to that point because if there is, you know, some sort of proof – on paper or email, scout reports that the Spurs did know this kid had a proclivity uh, to do alleged acts that he allegedly did, then that's not going to be a good look, Casey. Yeah, well, I think, again, in the context, I'll preface this in the context of, you know, nothing is concrete. I'll say alleged, alleged, five times more over alleged. This is just hypothesizing to protect ourselves. Yeah, it is. Uh, somebody, somebody, somebody. It, it, I don't think it's a matter of if they knew. I think it's a matter of how high up in the chain of command that they mm-hmm. knew. Yeah, you know, it, it's my guess as to what happened. An emphasis on alleged and guess is you have Brian Wright, first year, second year, very green to his role at the time. He was he wasn't even in. But with the primo pick, he wasn't even in, was he even as GM for a year yet? Mm-hmm. Not even. Not no, even that, that was very, his, yeah, he was still young. Well, in that role with the Spurs. In that role. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he was, that's, primo was his first pick. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're seeing this. And the more I've heard the, the minor details that have, that we have gotten, my interpretation of it was sitting down was you have a, a new ish GM who has his prized first round lottery pick. He sees the first thing, he gets first win of the first incident, what happened? Tries to work his way around it. Mm-hmm. This continues to happen internally, and he doesn't make the effort to go beyond what it was above him because he's protecting himself. He'd rather try to fix the issue before it gets to the people above mm-hmm. him. Because what's the, what's the look if you're a first, second year GM and your first round pick, first, first round pick, you take number 12 overall, where it was 12, 13, whatever it was, yeah. they have to fire him for doing what he did. I mean, I mean that looks awful on you as the GM. So I think he was trying to, you know, play it out as long as he can because he knew that he had someone in the psychiatrist who was a professional. And people will always say, you know, why didn't she say something after the first time? When you have someone like that, a physician, a clinician, someone who prides themselves in their job, very much she could look at that scenario and she's like, 
yeah, this is messed up, um, but this is a very sick man. And as a, as a, you know, someone who is hired to fix people who are struggling mentally, this mm-hmm. is my job. This is my job to do that. So the first time he happens, in reference to his troubled past, she's thinking, okay, this is this is messed up, but I, I'm I'm a professional. I've done this before. I've dealt with sick people. And when the things keep happening and happening and happening, and you get to time five, six, seven, and you're saying mm-hmm. these things like, hey, Josh is still doing this. Let's come to some sort of mediation. You know, maybe we can do this in public. Maybe we can assign Josh to somebody else. Yeah, you know, some there's there's something adding up. She's saying, I'm not trying to get Josh fired over here. I'm trying to fix the guy, but we got to do something. And Brian Wright doesn't do anything. He's telling her all the things he wants to hear that that she mm-hmm. wants to hear while trying to protect himself. It leads to what it is. And then by not renewing her contract and allegedly, again, per the per the the lawsuit, not renewing her contract and spinning that that this was now her problem, I think that's where the Spurs shot themselves. Yeah. Because yeah. if they had renewed her contract, say say we're going we're going by by because the only thing we know right now is the Busby side of the story, her mm-hmm. story. If they renew her contract and they say, Okay, this happened, you know, we're sorry it happened, handle it internally like they did, they renew her they don't spin the blame, you know, there's a very good chance that she's still with the team right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The way I see it, I mean, there's a very good chance she's still with the team right now. They handle it on the inside. They get Primo the appropriate help. and They reach a middle ground without deflecting this and putting this on her. I think, you know, she could still be with the team. And I, and, and, you know, and I'm legitimately of the belief that Pop didn't know. I, I am. I, I'm legitimately of the belief because I think it was one of those things where Brian Wright knows, knew uh, that if that word got above him, Primo's losing a job. And in all likelihood, Brian Wright is probably going to be out of a job too, depending yeah. on how things play out. It certainly just looks like a blemish on his thing. So it, I'm of that belief right now. Yeah. It, it definitely but, is going to be some. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is definitely again, some. Again, uh, again, all alleged hypothetical. Yes. Yes. Stuff we're talking about here. Yes. Yes. Basing this on the lawsuit that's public already and allegations made by Coffin to the Spurs and Primo. Uh, When we get back, uh, we just wrap up this chat and then dive into tonight's game Spurs, Nuggets. Yeah, they play again. Hopefully, the Spurs don't get routed like they did the last time at the Mile High City. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today from the games that matter. The most of the biggest stories in sports go beyond the sport scoreboard, that is, and behind the scenes where the local experts and insights only Lockdown can provide. Lockdown Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. We're back with Casey Vieira, my colleague at Ken's 5 San Antonio. Follow him on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. Check him out. Thursday through Sunday, holding it down on the sports anchor desk for Ken's 5. So, Casey, all in all, you know, I think the best way to sum it up, but you did it perfectly earlier, is to say buckle up because this is going to be a long mm-hmm. ride. Yeah, yeah, comfortable, I mean, that's man. Just the way. Yeah, I, I, I don't anticipate anything new. The only thing I can think of new, the the biggest quote unquote bombshell that could happen is if uh, the if there's criminal charges filed, because that tells you even yeah. more that right th- that. <clears throat> there is enough evidence and proof and witnesses or what have you that they the Bear County, that's the county San Antonio sits in for those people who are not from the city. Uh, I feel enough that Primo did more than what he should have and got away, you know, and did criminal. His activities rose to uh, his alleged activities rose to criminal filing. But other than that, yeah, I think you're just going to get Indy Tennis Center brings up something to Popovich pregame. You're going to get the same thing. We stick by what we said. If you ask the Spurs to comment, they're probably not going to comment at all. And yeah, and, and, and yeah. anything that doesn't directly involve them, anything that's like, oh, what's, what's your thought on, on, yeah. on this that doesn't, that, that they don't have to in, mm-hmm. terms of, of, in terms of it being specifically primo, 
It'll be just like Josh Primo never played a second for this franchise. Oh, they it'll, made that very clear. Yeah. Yeah, it'll just be like this is some guy who is watching out in the stands. Like they had mm-hmm. no tie. They had no tie to Josh Primo in any capacity. And like you said, they're I mean, they're starting they're they're treating that like it is. Like that's yeah. the case right now. You know. Yeah, and and the the, the the speed at which they erased Primo from every single thing was incredible. I mean, it felt, I mean, I think they, I think the, the fans that went to, no, I think I know because fans told me that went to that first game after Primo got a wave, they was Chicago, I think it was. That, uh, yes. Yeah. That the only time Primo showed up was just in that video montage to start the games, you know, to get the crowd hyped and introduce the starting yeah. lineups. But other than that, Online, in store, NBA store.com, everywhere Primo can be found. He was white from existence. So well, that's how Ooh. you knew. And that's I mean, how, that's you, how knew. you knew it was going to be bad. I mean, yeah. you go you go up there and you see on that site, you know, fanatics or whatever, and you mm-hmm. you Google Devontae Kaycock and all of a sudden, you know, you got his t shirt, <laughs> yeah. his jersey yeah. from last year. You know, they, yeah. they keep every. I'm sure you could find a Kawhi bobblehead for like yep. five bucks on there yep. if you look hard. Yes, you enough. can. Yep. You know, when yep. do you when yep. do you think like the actual move happened? Like they they decided they were going to let him go. I Thursday? think in, in, in the in the road trip. When, during that, yeah, well, that, we know yeah. what happened on the road trip. Yeah. I, I think he didn't. Well, yeah, he didn't. Well, he I didn't think play that Wednesday game. No, he didn't. So I think something between then after that, I know they. they for those of you I don't remember, Spurs played Minnesota twice in their gym. I think it was right. not back to back, but it was like a day gap. But um, that's when they think, found out because he, he, he fired. Do you, you think he was fired before they left Minnesota? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I think so too because he I, played I, heavy I, minutes I in so that too. first Minnesota game. He yeah. played twenty, I believe twenty something close to twenty minutes a game in that that game, and so it was like hunky dory, woohoo! Get out there, primo, go show what you got. Then boom. He had I wouldn't be surprised bucks. if they found out. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised that they found out Monday night, and they didn't. You know, they were playing him very loosely and getting all the details, mm-hmm. and that's why he didn't play Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah, be surprised. I, I, yeah. So, so earlier I was sort of like, okay, what could happen next? As far as uh, you know, a big move, a big explosive bombshell thing. Okay, obviously we talked about the criminal thing. That could probably be nice. another thing too. If more women come forward, because remember, it's allegedly multiple women. That's just mm-hmm. Dr. Cawthon. So mm-hmm. according to the press conference and according to the allegations in the lawsuit that's public, everybody, this um, there's many uh, there's other women. There's at so, least one. Uh, in, uh, yeah. Allegedly, uh, there's at least one in Minneapolis right now. Yeah. And I think that yeah. honestly, I think they will. They, they might not, you know, attach face to it, but I, mm-hmm. I have very little reason <laughs> to believe they would not. Yeah. And and if you go to the uh, Busby social media, uh, his tw- the law firm's Twitter or, you, or social, just social media in general for their his, Tony Busby's uh, firm, uh, he puts it out there. Like if you've been a, if you have any allegations towards Primo, reach us at this number. Blah 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 blah. So, yeah, he really, yeah, yeah, he does. If you go to their Twitter page, it's out there. They put out there. If you have, uh, it's, it's like those, it's like those commercials. Yep. Just you'll like those see the lawyers, they're like, you know, you'll be affected by mesothelioma or something. Yep, it's like a long exactly man, just like wow. that. Yeah, <laughs> so that is kind of the nutshell of what's happening right now, everybody. Uh, there's probably more to come. More if they do more filings, discovery, amended complaints. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be on top of it at kins5.com. Casey will make sure you know on TV. Uh, holding it down again Sunday through Thursday in the anchor desk and me at kens5.com slash Spurs. But there is a game tonight. Yes, the Spurs um, get hopefully will look to bounce back from that. <laughs> Did they even show up, Casey? Or or was just Denver that hot? I mean, they could have thrown up a shot from the the tunnel and it probably they probably would have gone on. Yeah, they were, they were cooking. The man. To be fair, they were, they were cooking. I don't know if anyone was throwing them down on, on Saturday Jeez. night. They were They were cooking. They they never shot less than sixty percent for the entire game, that that last matchup. Denver was just nailing everything, and then all of a sudden Bones Highland looked like he's the next coming of Michael Jordan. 
<laughs> oh, Bone, he's fun, man. I, yeah, I, I, fun. I like watching. I mean, mm-hmm. Bones Highland's fun. Yeah, I don't know how. I, I mean, I, they, they. I was listening to something the other day. I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about him. They're like, they like him, but apparently, you know, with Murray still easing mm-hmm. his way back into things, they've been playing him more as a true point, and that's not really his vibe. He's more of that Lou Will type of mm-hmm. smaller guard. I don't, I mean, right. That ain't for me to say. I like watching him. He's fun. So, yeah, we'll figure well, it out. Yeah. Yeah, well, the Spurs enter tonight's game five and five. They're on a three game losing streak. Yeah, Team Tank is probably cheering right now, Casey. And uh, the Denver Nuggets will make their first visit to San Antonio this season. Obviously, the Spurs are 0 1 against the Nuggets this season. The Spurs are coming off that 126 to 101 road loss to Denver uh, after the game. Yaka Pertle spoke, Casey, and he was really, this is probably like, your Pertle has that like quiet anger. Like he's not mad. I could be like, oh, these guys are cussing. He's more blunt anger because he really yeah. spoke at how about it was. He said the Spurs uh, lost fight, that they got rattled, that Denver's hot shooting got into their heads. Uh, you're starting to see a pattern now, not just with Pertle, uh, whenever time there's a loss, but with Keldon and Trey Jones and the rest of the crew. Uh, Devin Vassell, too. They start saying this. We need to come out of the gates stronger. I've already heard that time and time again from this young team. And it seems to be that seems to be the Achilles heel in the early season for this young team. At least one of them is if they don't come out to a hot start, they're they're usually in trouble, Casey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's that was uh, I thought that was very accurate. Uh, mm-hmm. But but listen, I mean, that's kind of pay for what you, what you get, you know, it's, it, it, this is, this is what they are. They're a mm-hmm. young team and they're very much susceptible to nights. Like we saw like mm-hmm. nights, like we saw on, on, on Saturday night and where, where they get out to these slow starts. And while they're not the only team in the world mm-hmm. to get off to a slow start to start, start the season or uh, just, you know, in this early season, the slow start to start the game with these younger teams, really hard after you fall be- fall behind flat to get right back into things because some of the vet squads the ones who have been around them on several fronts i mean the talent standpoint but that's understandable but mm-hmm. then the experience thing too you know when, when they fall behind and knowing when and how to stop the bleeding or mm-hmm. to get a couple plays going to at least get that spark they don't really have that and that's mm-hmm. when things spiral out of control fast that's when you have yeah. eight point leads turn into 16 point leads and 16 point leads turn into you know 25 point leads just like Mm -hmm. that you know you need that stopper sometimes they don't Mm -hmm. have that but listen that's what we thought right that's what we knew and and here we are yeah yep and in the last few games in this in this losing streak you're starting to see what i think you pointed out i pointed out pre-game i'm sorry pre pre pre-season and then during the off season that eventually this team will probably be scrappy but eventually that opposite team's if they're playing a very talent heavy team is going to take over and you're starting to see that Denver, you know, their talent just took over with, with Joker and, and Murray, you know, and, and pretty much Denver was just hitting everything, everything mm-hmm. they threw up went in. It was just ridiculous. You saw that against um, uh, the Clippers, you know, their talent just, you know, overtook and, you know, took charge of the game late night and, and late in the game. And that's the thing with the Spurs team. They don't, they're, they're, they're good. They're they're a good young scrappy team finding their way, but they don't talent wise. They haven't proven that they can be that team that can turn on that switch and be like, oh okay, we're down ten with eight minutes left in the game. We got this. Boom, they they win. They they don't have that. So right. No, to to be fair, they got banged up in this injury. I'm sorry, this three game losing streak. You know, Devin Vassell was out. Uh, Zach Collins has been in and out. <clears throat> Blake Wesley's obviously down. Good, though. That's a, that's very much a silver lining. The Celtics played well yeah. coming back the last couple. Yeah, of games. he's 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 definitely you know rising fast. You talking about taking the next step of your development? He's showing it. But their defense definitely needs to improve a bit in this three game losing skid. Casey opponents are averaging one hundred and twenty seven point three points per game on the Spurs, so they're they're cooking the Spurs, and that has to step there, up. There are yeah. better. There have been better defensive efforts in the history of the sport. Yeah. 
<laughs> to say the least. Now, there's a little bit yeah. of good news. The Spurs have won two straight games over Denver at the AT&T, so hopefully that'll continue tonight. But if I, if I, you know, I'm looking at two key stats for the Spurs to win. I'm looking at rebounding and assists. So, so far this season, the Nuggets are undefeated, 5-0 and when they out-rebound their opponent, and they're also 5-0 and this season when they hand out 30 or more assists. So if you're keeping track of little things like that, Spurs fans, keep an eye on that tonight as the Spurs face Denver. Casey, what do you think? How do you see tonight's going down? You know what? We'll give him the dub, man. We'll give him the dub. Look at Casey. We feel good. We're off to a new work week. Why why start the work? It's bad enough we got to wait until 8.30 for the start of this game tonight for whatever reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe you know. But you know what? Let's get some positive vibes. Let's get him the dub. Let's do it. Yeah, I wish I knew why it's such a late start. I, mean, I, I would have said, like, oh, it must be on national. Oh, wait, it's not. Yeah, Spurs are not on national TV, except for one game this year. <laughs> and and it would be against the Warriors at the Dome for that throwback game. But right. I, I'm going to say Spurs get the L. Uh, you know, I think Denver just just a little bit too much. They get the size with Gordon and, and, and Joker and... If Collins is out, you know, that that's another body they can't throw out because a, a Perto can't hand, handle it all in that paint. And right. So I think, you know, and by the way, he did a bang up job to start that game versus Denver. I, he looked beastly. And then things yeah. kind of mellowed out. But no, I'm going to be. Like, all right, cool, bro. <laughs> by the way, what did you think of that, that zip pass he had to? I think it was Aaron he's Gordon. So fun to watch, man. Yeah. He's, he's so fun to watch. Mm, mm, mm. By the way, everybody, uh, it, it, it seems to me that, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Team Tank must be loving this right now. And if you're a Team Tank, y- I mean, yay, but I mean, you just got to really cling on to the fact that that 14% to get Wimby is going to cash in because these beatdowns the Spurs are getting, they can make for a long night, Casey. You got to focus on the positives. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't remember. Someone tweeted it. They said they said something to the effect of, "Take you know when when watching the Spurs this year, your takeaway should be the positive signs." Whether in this case, you know, it was like an example last time out. Your your big takeaway from the game, they lost whatever. But hey, the cells sure. the cells continue to look good. So mm-hmm. take that with you. Do that. Absolutely, that'd be a lot of it. So. Yeah, there'll be a lot of it. Yeah. Hey, we're done talking. We want to hear from you. What do you think about the Josh Primo situation? We caught you up on what was said since the Spurs waived him. Uh, Where do you stand on the allegations towards the Spurs and Josh Primo? And what do you think about tonight's game, Spurs Nuggets? We definitely love to hear from you. You can let Casey know on Twitter at Casey underscore VM or me at Jeff G Spurs Zone. And we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Check out Locked On Sports today as your next listen. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, wherever you get podcasts, just as Locked On Spurs. So for Casey Vieira, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked On Spurs. 